Okay, well, it came, looks like it's pretty well packaged. The ends are all sort of buttressed, I guess. I don't know. Supported pretty well. I don't see any damage. Let's bust it open and see what it looks like. Oh, it's a red one. I wanted a pink one. I'm going to have to send it back. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, it looks like all the big parts are there. There's the oil bottle, there's the hose, there's the cord. Let's see what's in all this stuff. I bet this is the drill chuck. Some assembly required. There's some Allen keys. Okay. That's good. This must be the drill chuck. Yep. Ta da! With a chuck key. San O. S A N O U, whatever that is. Uh, up to half inch. Okay. Cool. I'll take it. Oil bottle. Or a lubricant bottle. Yeah. Nice little on-off valve. Seems to work. <clears throat> yes, I just put my mouth on that and it came from China. That was a bad idea, wasn't it? Okay. <clears throat> There's the hose. Now. Yep, it's not light. Okay, that's nice. It came with a hard case. I'm pretty excited about that. That way if I do have to carry it around or move it to a buddy's house or whatever. Yep. <clears throat> okay, I plugged it in. So the magnet has to be on for it to power on, obviously. Let's read the instructions here. Operational manual by Blue Art Tools. Uh, it is in English so far. That's good. Table of contents, troubleshooting, general maintenance, occasional maintenance, parts list, breakdown view. Okay, do's and don'ts, specifications. 595 RPM, if you're wondering. One speed gearbox. Okay. Magnet adhesion is 2,600 pounds. And cutting depth is 2 inch maximum. So annular cutters, 7 16 to 1 and a half max. Pulls 10 amps. 40 pounds. Okay. Good enough. Looks like it has a carbon brush holder. You could replace brushes, so that's good. That'd be nice for his brushless, but that would cost a lot more, obviously. Okay, a bunch more do's and don'ts, or uh, how-tos. Installing the cutters, troubleshooting, general maintenance, occasional maintenance. Okay, I'm assuming these just screw in. <clears throat> so far, so good. Okay.
Okay, so that is, let's start there. One, two, three. Three full revolutions of the handle brings it from all the way to the top to as far down as it goes. All right. Everything seems to be fairly sturdy and tightened down. It's fairly positive. It maintains its, uh, it doesn't feel like it wants to roll up or down by itself. So, you definitely have to move it, which is what you want for sure. So this just slides over these two screws right here. Think that's coming out. Kind of sits there loosely. I guess you could tighten those up, but. <clears throat> oh, that's the fitting. Duh, okay. All right. That's good. Okay, what mine didn't come with, and maybe none of them come with, is a Weldon shank adapter. So that's supposed to go into the Weldon shank right there, and then this screws onto it for your standard chuck. So this just came as well. Thirteen pieces annular cutter. They're all one inch length. Two guide pins, nice. And um this is a seven six. I ordered this set because so many of the sets didn't have three quarter and one inch, and that's going to be what I'm going to be drilling a lot of three quarter and one inch for these um, category one and category two tractor pins. So a lot of the sets were not that size. They were they just totally skipped that. They were cheaper. They were six piece sets. I think this was about a hundred bucks. So the biggest one in here is what is it? An inch and one sixteenth. And that's this one right here. Oh, God, that's sharp, dude. One and one sixteenth. So also made in China. No surprise there. But I also wanted a small one, too, because sometimes I'm drilling small holes as well. And there's a seven sixteenths. That's pretty small. So let's see. Where's the three quarter? There's the three quarter. That's what I'm going to be using probably a lot of. What I'd like to do is go ahead and use this as my work table and drill a 1 16th hole right here through this and um, we'll see how that goes and then I'll have a hole here that I can put work on top of and then drop my drill uh, my smaller bits down inside of it okay um, what that also means is I need to have this lined up somehow some way with some little pieces of metal welded on so I can drop this in place and so it doesn't move at a position. The magnet will hold it, but I want to be able to drop it in place so that it's perfectly centered over the hole that I make, if that makes sense. Okay, good. Okay. So, this guide pin um, has a little slot there for oil to leak down to come down inside the cutter. And that should punch out the slug as well. Pilot pin, guide pin. Okay. So good. Let's put this in place.
voila let's put some fluid in it so I bought this a while back while I was doing a lot of drill pressing drill pressing cuts okay and the valve there is closed so just fill it up a little bit in case there's some catastrophe okay so if we open this it should start feeding there it goes and then it should start dripping out the bottom let's turn the magnet on seems to be pretty firm I'm gonna go with real gentle pressure so it doesn't rock it at all I didn't leave my oil on, did I? Okay, let's turn the oil on this time. Hey, I'm obviously going to have to work on my oil control because it is slinging it everywhere. <clears throat> Maybe I don't have to open it fully, but just a little tiny bit. Okay. Okay, good. And I expected that to be pretty easy because this is not hard steel at all. Okay. Okay, now we're just going to turn the oil on just a little bit. Okay, so I used the grinder and the flap disc and then a straight edge to get a little bit flatter surface on this. And now I have a pretty flat surface, so that's good. Let's see how this does now. The magnet's on. There's no more wiggling on the stand itself. We're going to turn on the oil just a tiny bit here. Just like, okay, like that. <laughs> Let's see how it does this time. shut the magnet off instead of the okay
Okay, so that was a good lesson. I reached around to hit the power. I hit the magnet. Of course, it turned the power off, and I thought I turned it off, but I'd actually hit the magnet, so. All right, it's not a, obviously a thick piece of steel at all, but that'll be a nice little catch. What I probably do is when I get the steel plate that I put on this, I'm going to weld that to the top of this so I have a nice flat surface. I'm probably going to drill this out, uh, or not drill it out, but um, plasma use the plasma cutter or something to cut this out really big. And then I'll just use this big annular coat cutter to cut through the half inch steel plate that I put on there. Okay. So good. That'll give me something to work with right now though. Awesome. Just do quickly is I'm making some pieces of metal that I'm going to weld onto the back of an AR500 steel target. So I want to weld it on right here. Let's just pick this one right here. This is going to be a cut and a cut. I want to weld it on right here and then have a hole here and a hole here so I have some adjustability of, of the pitch of the angle that the plate sits at as it hangs from chains. So I'm going to drill four 7 16 holes right there and there and there and there. Let's see how it goes. Okay, obviously I'm rednecking this. This is not something that I'd want to do for anything thick. If any of this comes loose, it could cause this to shift and break this bit and fly up in my face and I don't know what. So. All right, let's see how it does. Turn on some old. Have the switch perfectly timed. Okay. You know, I guess that went pretty well considering I don't have thick steel at all. To That's not even quarter inch. I mean, that's, <laughs> it might be quarter inch in places, but it's super thin. And uh, so that's why the magnet wasn't holding and was walking some. You can see where it walked. That's not good for bits. I'm not a machinist, but I know that's not good for bits. Um, and despite the two quarts of oil on the floor, otherwise the machine works fine. Um, really, it's just my ineptness at using this tool. So that'll come with time. Um, once I get a better base built, I want to weld this around the bottom so it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't wobble at all. I'm going to weld it around the top edge as well and uh, get that nice and level as I can. Um, get it welded in, burned in, and then we'll weld that two inch or a half inch plate on top and hopefully that'll solve my issues cool okay so you may be asking yourself what is a mag drill and why do i need one um this is one of those tools that i didn't know i needed until my buddy sh got one and started telling me about it and i started watching videos on it and i um I'm really glad I bought it, even though I've just used it to drill these little few holes. I have a bunch of holes I have to drill in this tractor bucket project that's coming up, and that's primarily the reason I bought it. I've drilled holes with drill presses, small ones like this, big ones, um, all my life. That's what I've used. And this is basically a portable drill press. Now, why do you need a portable drill press? Because you can't always lift your work into your shop 
inside of a drill press, okay? That's assuming you can take your piece of metal and put it in there and drill it, okay? So this allows you to take your drill press to your work. Let's say you're drilling on the side of a truck frame or inside of a trailer frame, or maybe you're drilling a hole in the side of your structural steel like an I-beam inside your garage or your barn or your shed or your workshop, and you want to drill a hole through, put a wire through or whatever, I don't know. You just set it sideways, turn the magnet on it, stick sideways, it'll drill sideways, it'll drill upside down, um, and it drills very quickly. Now, so $400 for this, this is a Chinese drill. It's uh, not made in USA, obviously, but $400. Um, you pay at least that for a decent drill press, uh, a good brand. And then you will might say, well, these cutters are expensive. These cutters, if you treat them right and you keep them oiled and you don't abuse them like I obviously did this morning, they'll last quite a long time. Um, this set of 11 bits, this is a 13-piece set they're calling it. It's actually 11 bits. 11, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. Um, it's 100 bucks. Okay, you'll spend 50 bucks easy on a t good titanium drill bit set, if not more. And that'll last you how long? A couple years? So that's probably about how long this is going to last me, I'm expecting. And if I have to replace, I'm going to burn out the three quarter one probably pretty quickly because that's what I'm going to use the most of. Um, I'll just buy an extra one for 20 bucks on Amazon and have it shipped to my house. Okay, 20 bucks for a drill bit. I've paid $15 for a half inch titanium drill bit at uh, my local tractor store so or my local hardware store. So they're not that much more expensive. Um, I mean, as far as the price goes, this is a portable drill press and you can use annular cutters, which is just awesome. Um, they cut super, super fast. So. I'm going to build this stand for it so I can move this stand anywhere so I can put small pieces of work on it. Um, then for bigger stuff, I'll just magnetize it directly to my work. So, point being, um, mag drill, yeah. Do you need it? Maybe. Um, you got to decide if you're going to buy a drill press. Um, I would highly suggest buying one of these instead of a drill press just because of the versatility of it, the portability of it, that you can mount it anywhere and drill a hole in anything. And um, the annular cutters are just phenomenal. That's really what makes it uh, super fast. Okay, well good, so far I'm happy with this Blue Rock. I've obviously got a lot to learn in my practice with this. So I'll be watching more YouTube videos, trying to learn from the experts um, that are kind enough to put their expertise on YouTube. So thank you guys for y'all that do that. Um, I don't see any quality issues right now with this one out of the box. There's no loose screws. It doesn't wobble. It seems to be straight. Um, it seems to do a good job. So I'll keep making videos on it as I uh, do more on this uh, tractor bucket project. Okay. I have to make a pass here and then a tie-in. Woohoo! Tie-in. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a little more metal on, a little more a pass out here and a pass up here. So three passes all the way around. Looks better. I think that'll hold. Um, pretty big impact from 308 bullets hitting targets like this and high velocity bullets. So yeah, um, good.